pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we all just stay standing for one moment? Um, we lost a uh, trusted friend of mine this past couple weeks, uh, Anthony Sexton. I'm sure a lot of you guys knew him. He was a, um, a veteran, a volunteer firefighter in the community, a storied New York City police officer. He rode a motorcycle in New York City. He was a father, a husband, grandfather, and dear friend of mine and, and, and the community. So just a moment of silence for Anthony Sexton. Okay, thank you very much. So we're going to um, change up the agenda a little bit. Um, first of all, welcome to the May meeting of the Phillipstown Town Board. So we're going to change the agenda a little bit because we have another fun thing to do tonight. Um, to thank, thank you to the class of 2023 for giving us two enjoyable moments this year. So Matthew, I don't think I have ever attended a Haldane sporting event that you were not at. <laughs> Honestly, I, I see you at every single one. Um, and I know you were an integral part of the, um, the run of the basketball team. I know you weren't on the court, but I think Verge will miss you as much as he's going to miss the guys that are sitting behind you, though. So we are very proud to once again uh, present a, an award, a proclamation to a wonderful young man who served the community in several different capacities. Um, I, it's been an honor to watch you grow up as well as the rest of the boys behind you. So um, without further ado, if you'd like to come up, we will read the presentation. Hopefully Tara may be one big enough that I can see. But let's see. Yep, I got one. You want me by the mic? Yeah. Okay. Come on over here. Whereas the town board of the town of Phillipstown, by this proclamation, does hereby recognize Matthew Gingulis for his contributions and outstanding support of the Phillipstown community, specifically his most recent accomplishment of winning the Putnam County Youth Board and Youth Bureau Youth Award. None of us could attend that night, so that's why we're, we're making a special night for you tonight. Whereas Matthew is a member of the Haldane chapter of the National Honor Society and has maintained a 98 grade point average, and whereas he has volunteered many hours with Our Lady of Loretto Church, the American Legion, and VFW, and elsewhere throughout the community, and whereas Matthew was team man manager and statistician for the Varsity Boys basketball team and is currently a member of the Varsity Boys baseball team, and whereas Matthew's hard work, dedication, and determination has helped him continue to be an outstanding member of the Phillipstown community. And whereas Matthew will be attending the University of Massachusetts, what a surprise, to study sports management in the fall, <laughs> where he will undoubtedly continue to be the kind and dedicated individual he has proven to be throughout Phillipstown. Now, therefore, the town board of the Phillipstown, on behalf of all its residents, recognizes this bright and outstanding, outstanding young man for his many accomplishments and specifically his achievement of being awarded the Youth Award, Youth Award by Putnam County Youth Board and Youth Bureau. Congratulations. Thank you. I think we should do one of these a week. I mean, it's, a, it's just an enjoyment. You guys are all can take off now because I'm sure you all want to get out of here. <laughs> Unless you want to stay for this exciting meet. <laughs> Congratulations. You don't have to go. You can stay. <laughs> Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Michael Hi, friend. Pretty bad shape, huh? What's that? Michael. He's in the hospital. Okay. Um, workshop meeting, March 29th, 2023. Approval of minutes. Motion. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Monthly meeting of April 13th, 2023. So moved. Second. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Workshop meeting of April 19th, 2023. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. Workshop meeting of April 26th, 2023. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. I just want to let everybody know that um, we decided last week, Tara, to stop printing all of these minutes because we would have this gigantic stack of paper that I, I have to think none of us even looked at. So. Come on. <laughs> yourself, John. I did. Okay. Well, we can still view the minutes. We, we have them electronically. There is a set available if anybody wants to see the hard copy. But um, I, I just thought it would be wasteful for us to continue to print these minutes, and, and they're stacked up in our offices. Yeah, no, so I totally agree. Okay. Our packet's half the size that it used to be. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Committee reports. Uh, conservation Board met uh, in April on April 4th. Uh, the Conservation Board acknowledged receipt of a letter from Beatty and Watson that Magazino was withdrawing a wetland permit application related to a sign they were installing. A new business, Bosca Bell, uh, is seeking a permit uh, to apply herbicides to eradicate non-native lawn uh, for meadow restoration. Conservation Board scheduled a site visit for April 29th. Uh, the Manitou Point Preserve is seeking a, a permit for mowing of Phragmites. Um, the board approved the permit, but it's going for a visit on April 29th. Uh, 16 Fox Hollow Lane, the residents are seeking a permit to repair an existing bridge over Arden Brook, which is a Class B stream. Conservation Board is scheduling a visit for April 29th. Uh, uh, of course, the Conservation Board um, has jurisdiction over over uh, development near wetlands buffers or streams. In Old Business, 168 South Mountain Pass, uh, re the residents are seeking to build a single-family dwelling um, addition of about 3,000 square feet that is close to a stream and wetland buffer. Conservation Board has written a letter. They conducted a visit to the Planning Board um, related to their belief that there should be a in-depth mitigation plan, stormwater plan, and protections in place before any uh, construction commences. The next meeting of the Conservation Board is this upcoming Tuesday, May 9th at 7.30. Thank you, Jason. Recreation. Good evening. The Recreation Committee met this week on Tuesday evening and um, reported that all of the programs for the summer, the summer camp, are fully um, enrolled, but there will be openings throughout the summer, so families that are still looking for a summer program, check the Phillipstown Recreation Department website. Um, the Cent Phillipstown Recreation Department is currently hosting the Haldane AP testing exams um, for the next week, and other programs are being relocated as Haldane uses some of the space for their testing. That started during the COVID pandemic was and was su yeah. successful. So they're continuing that partnership um, to give them a little bit more space to do these exams. The spring programming will continue throughout the month and will be pushed out um, into the final weeks of the late spring, early summer ahead of camp. Full preschool registration is going well. The teachers are touring and visiting with new families. There are a few spots still available for the full preschool program, so if you are interested, please contact the Phillipstown Rec Center. And there are a few spots left in the before care program. The after care program, unfortunately, is full. Um, well, most of the families that are um, registered for that are um, it, they're on the list for the full. But if anyone drops out, you can check with the rec center if you still have a need for after care. And finally, I'd like to report that the Peter Pan production at the Depot Theater was a great success, and the Recreation Commission um, celebrated the three sold-out shows, and um, one of our council members had um, Jason, some children, yeah, and Jason was in, no, <laughs> Jason's children. Peter Pan, it was a wonderful experience. <laughs> no, I, uh, both Seneca and Evan were in Peter Pan, we saw uh, two out of three performances, which just got better with every viewing. I'm sure it did. <laughs> so that was it was great, though. It was, it was, it was fantastic. A great, a great success. Time. It's a great production. Wonderful. And May 17th, there's still a few spots left for the senior luncheon, so please contact the rec center. May 17th is the seniors' luncheon. Thank you, Judy. You're welcome. 
And you're up again, Phillips Town Hub. Phillips Town Hub, as many of you know, the Hub Virtual Marathon is ongoing. It's not too late to register, and it runs throughout the month of May. Over 100 individuals and families have registered already, and from local businesses, there are $6,000 worth of sponsorships already. So if anyone would like to participate, it's a great program, a great event to support the Hub. The Hub also welcomed new administrative assistant, Lavasia, to the Hub team. The parent support group continues to meet at the hub, and you can contact the Phillips Town Hub for more details. And it is also hosting Cold Spring Police <coughs> Department training, um, so that, that's a great collaboration between the hub and the Cold Spring Police Department. In the month of April, 322 participant contacts were made at the hub, and year to date, there have been 3,199 contacts with people who needed the hub. And um, complex cases totaled 49 through up to and through April. Thank you. I, I honestly wish there was no need for the hub, but I can't, can't even imagine what a success it has become from, you know, that started Nancy Montgomery's uh, brain yes. and um, it just has blossomed into such a, an important service for the town. It's, it's amazing. And, and outside the town, there's people from all over the communities um, yeah, utilizing story. it. So and they my did have a little participant story, which you know I could share with people. Maybe we could post it online. But um, you know, families reach out and thank us for the services that have That's been amazing. so instrumental in improving their lives. And one family had reached out to the hub about equine therapy for their child after regular therapy didn't help, right. and the hub was able able to connect Facilitate. them with the resources. And That's you know. Amazing made a big difference in that child's life. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Hub. Thank you, Judy. Uh, planning board, Bob. Um, I attended the planning board April 20th. Uh, it was a very packed agenda, as has it been the last several months. We had two public hearings. The first public hearing was the Bach Veterinarian Hospital, uh, 470, 475 Fishkill Road. Uh, they're moving their office that used to be down here by Yanatelli's Liquor Store up to their home, and they're going to be using their garage. They need a special use permit for this. Uh, so the public hearing, there was many people that came out and spoke in favor of this. There was only one citizen that really didn't think it was the right thing to do, uh, but the majority of the people are, are for this. So the public hearing was closed, and the planning board will prepare resolutions for next month to pass that. Hudson Highland Reserve, another public hearing, Route 9, Horton Road. They've been in front of the planning board now for over seven, eight years now. There was a public hearing. Uh, many, many spoke, and there was not anybody that was in favor of this project. But uh, again, land user, land owners do have the rights. Uh, the, so the public hearing went on for quite a while. Everyone got two or three minutes to speak, uh, so no one was denied. They kept the public hearing opening until next month. So if anyone else wants to say anything or write an email to uh, Cheryl, our secretary of the board, that those comments can be added to the public hearing. Uh, under old business, Garrison Golf Course, another one that's been to the planning board for several years now. Um, last month, they, they determined that the planning board determined that the, e, the DEIS was incomplete. This month, the, they came back with and they considered it completed. They'll have a public hearing next month on May 18th. Uh, another on, on the old business, it's Koloski and Fleffel, 168 East Mountain Road. They're building a 3,000 square foot addition to several, a garage and all those locations on their house. Uh, the conservation board was involved in that, and they, they gave their report in the, in the, in the, um, to the planning board. The planning discussed that, and they're going to hold. They're having a public hearing as well on May 18th. Under new business, uh, 1135 Route 9B Garrison. That's the pizza place down there, or the Garrison Cafe. They want to build a modest little addition to the back. He won't let even people driving by the building won't even know it's there. It's going to be 800 square, 480, 385 square feet. An addition. It's really just for really for the for the uh, uh, little storage and also to expand their kitchen a little bit. Uh, so anyway, the, the t planning board to consider it a type two secret action, consider it a minor project, and does and a site visit is not scheduled, does not need it, and they're scheduling a public hearing in June. Meeting was adjourned at 9:20. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Zoning. For the zoning board, the meeting was held on April 10th. Um, there was a public hearing for Kenneth McGovern of 58 Sproutbrook. The applicant is seeking a variance to, excuse me, construct a 945 square foot garage addition, and that was approved. Uh, Lauren Merrigan at 16 Stephanie Lane uh, is the applicant 
uh, was seeking a variance to construct a 40 by 60, 2,400 square foot storage garage, which was also approved. Um, the Clinton Watts and Emily Terrigan on 21 Quail Road in Cold Spring, the applicants were seeking a variance to construct a 550, sorry, 560 square foot pool pavilion. The application was uh, proposed and the application was also approved. So new business is Richard and Dawn uh, surrender of 70 Howland and Garrison. The applicants are seeking a variance to construct a 787 square foot addition to a 1,290 square foot pre-existing non-conforming structure. This is a public hearing which will be scheduled for May 8th, which is the next zoning board meeting. Um, and they don't have any old business, and that's it. Thank you, Meg. Highway. Highway. Uh, work performed for the Town Highway Department in the month of April, submitted by Superintendent uh, Adam Hotelling. It's official. The trailer that we had up there for many, many years is gone. If you drive by the Fiscal Road there in front of the, our new building, the trailer was taken out, I think, like a week ago today. Uh, the highway department is getting used to the new garage and office. It, it, it's a refreshing change. Finalized items are on the punch list, and that's being continued to be worked on. Crews have begun grading dirt roads for the spring season. For the month of April, $15,235 was spent on labor man hours for the month of April just on the dirt roads. It, it, uh, early in the month, we are very aware that dirt roads are very dry and dusty due to the lack of rain. We are also aware that the, the, after watering, dirt roads become very dry in only a few in a few hours, especially when the temperature is very high. We did have that one period of week there. We had very high temperatures and made the roads dry very, really quick and made it very dusty. Dirt roads, just like that's the, the way they are. We roughly have 30 plus miles of dirt roads, and we're doing our best to maintain them. Bridge resurfacing finished on East Mountain Road North near the reservoir of Beacon. Uh, East Mountain Road South will be closed from May 2nd to the 4th, which is the end of today, from the intersection of route, uh, North and South of Mailbox 744 to replace a pipe. If you went up there, it was, the, the, the pipe was broken and bent and the water wasn't flowing between the two, so the road was flooding out. So it had an emergency repair taken care of and they finished that work today. Uh, dumping is against the law. It, it ruins the atmosphere and the character of the beautiful town of Phillipstown. And once again, we, if you're contacted about finding old, we're finding old tires and dump in the woods, we must be pick, picking them up and hauling them away at our cost. This takes time, money out of our highway budget. And if the residents see anyone dumping anything, please call the, uh, the Sheriff's Department at 845-225-4300. As a reminder, residents are required to cut back any tree limbs, shrubbery, or brush that is all approaching on the town roads. This becomes a hazard for motorists living in their site, so please do so. The highway department received approximately 25 calls and emails regarding the roads concerns during the month of April. The highway department spent $5,026 on meet vehicle maintenance for the month of April. Submitted by Adam Hotelling, highway superintendent. My thanks to Adam uh, and the crew, always doing a wonderful job. Uh, building and land acquisitions, um, we did get rid of that trailer. That yep. was that was a, a monumental event when that trailer pulled away. So um, they're in the process of Grading it, landscaping it, the lights need to be finished, and then there will be some paving done there. So that's all I have. Bobby, anything else? Uh, no, I guess you know, the Garrison Water District, yeah, I was well, down there today. We, we fracked the well down well number two or three. I forget what number it was. But anyway, we had some success with that. And tomorrow they're doing an actual pump test. Uh, so that's going to help us, uh, hopefully. hopefully, yes. <laughs> Uh, maintain our water down there. We did, you know, we've been we've been trucking water in here now for quite some time, and this is going to be a, it's going to be a, a help to it yeah, until we get the other well online. The other well we have on will hopefully be online, and hopefully will be 40 years out. There's still a lot of work to be done on that one, but we have plenty of water over there. So we're hoping by the end of this year we won't be buying any water uh, from well, the, to anybody. the results of this test tomorrow are positive. We shouldn't be buying water by next week well, if we can keep our fingers <laughs> crossed so. all right cemetery committee um so the cemetery now that the weather is broke i guess i mean it's still kind of cold but um he's back over there and he's gonna be pre uh, repairing some of the stones and just the other day they were there cleaning it up mowing it and so we're just maintaining the cemeteries and we will be putting in the flags for memorial day um right up here on mountain avenue and 
the one right back here behind the school. So, thank you. Um, Nancy was, I should say, Nancy, uh, Legislator Montgomery was is unable to attend today, but she did send me a report. I'm happy to report the appointment of Bob Lipton as Commissioner of Bureau of Emergency Services and Phillipstown's own Ralph Falloon as the Deputy Commissioner. So that's that's good news for Phillipstown. Um, Saturday is Household Hazardous Waste Day at Fawnstalk State Park. Pre-registration is required. 845-808-1390 is the number to call to register. Semi-annual mortgage tax reports, Phillipstown will receive $182,493. So that's good news for the budget. And I spoke to DOT, and they will be addressing debris and pothole issues on 301. So sent from our legislator, Nancy Montgomery. Thank you, Nan. All right, get in. Um, I forgot to mention, Council Supervisor Van Tassel, no. um, <laughs> that um, Megan Cotter and the softball league had opened the field at Phillipstown Park. So, yeah. great work. Yeah. Great. Great work. The girls have a great place to play and to practice, and it's wonderful. Look. So they can call their own, so it's nice. Yeah. So yeah. Nobody have a game yet? No, no, game? they're just they're practicing there, but we're not. Um, shuffling around the schedule and overlapping and kicking each other off the one field we have now another field that the younger girls are able to play and the minors are able to play even the majors so it's great and it was a good utilization of a space that was yeah really right exactly and now but at some point you could actually have games in there. yeah at some point we will so if it ever stops so, raining <laughs> i know i'm like if you really want to learn how to slide now's the time all right well, let's get into the agenda you're on First is a resolution approving the indemnity agreement for construction of an emergency communications tower on town property, and this is a roll call vote. So this is a proposed communication tower that will be behind the salt shed that's at our highway garage. Um, this is not a cell tower. There will be no commercial cell users or cell companies on this tower. This was a request from Putnam County Bureau of Emergency Services to um, ensure a patent emergency communication system throughout um, Putnam and specifically Phillipstown. This is the last piece of the puzzle. Uh, I believe the county has invested, I want to say, $11 million in this project, and this is the last piece of the puzzle to um, actually start up this new system. But it does require a tower. Um, we have a very rocky terrain. We have hilly terrain, so this location was proposed by Putnam County. It's in the process of being approved by OSI, um, who has a conservation easement over the property. Um, they're doing a visual impact study now, as well as, Steve, there was one other thing that we were waiting on. The, the uh, conservation easement. Gotcha. So there'll be a property exchange uh, with the town of Phillipstown. We have to exchange property with them. So they have um, not lost value in their easement, so that will take place. Um, this tower is needed. Um, the communications in Phillipstown and in Putnam County are completely substandard, and they have been as long as I've been involved with the emergency services, which is 40 years. So this will finally put us um, up with Dutchess and Westchester so we can uh, have you know, patent communications with the emergency services. So it's very important that the town um, take part in this. So um, I'm not going to go through reading the um, indemnity, indemnity agreement. This is for OSI's purposes. But um, can I get a motion to accept the indemnity agreement for the construction of emergency communication tower on town property? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, roll call vote. Councilwoman Farrell. I vote aye. Councilman Angel. Aye. Councilman Flaherty. Aye. Councilwoman Cotter. Aye. And I vote aye. Thank you. Next is a resolution approving the appointment of Lou Leodi to the Continental Village Park District Advisory Board, effective March 21st, 2023. So this kind of happened already. So um, this will be in addition to the um, Continental, Continental Village Park District Advisory Board. Um, happy to get Lou on board and happy to have a volunteer step up to the board. So can I get a motion to approve um, Lou Liotti to the Continental Village Park District. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. John, can I ask a quick question? Sure. I've had two Continental Village residents reach out about interest in joining the advisory board. Is there, what's that process? If they're interested, do I? I would have 
have him contact Mike Fallon. Okay. Yeah, that would okay. be the best bet. Okay, thanks. Next is the Phillips Town Trails Committee to present the feasibility study on the multi-use path in Phillips Town. You're on. <laughs> Who's our spokesperson tonight? Please do. Thank you for coming in, Rebecca and Laura. Thank you. Trustee Bozzi, I should say. Uh, thank you so much. Um, today uh, we are here just to say thank you. Um, we hope that you confirmed the receipt of uh, the feasibility study and that you acknowledge the findings. Um, we're very glad. It's been two years of the, you know, working really hard getting this information out there, and we do hope, we do know that there's still more work to be done. There's still more residents to speak to and conversations to be had. Um, but we, you know, we're asking for um, you to confirm receipt of the study and acknowledge the findings today. Um, anything else? I'll just mention too, so again, this um, came about through a grant from the Hudson Valley uh, Greenway program that the um, town received. And uh, the um, Trails Committee as a town advisory committee has been um, kind of uh, supporting the development, um, working with the Western Sandstone Art Consultant to develop this feasibility study. We're presenting it to you. It's also kind of a, a check of um, what we need to do um, to fulfill the grant. Um, is, is for the town to acknowledge um, a receipt of the study. Um, and then we look forward to working with the town to fill out all the paperwork so that you um, receive the payment and it finalizes uh, the, the grant program. Great. Um, we, we, we will receive, we have received it. We will generate copies. The board will receive it. I, I think Tara will be able to put it on the website or not once a new website is up. It's on the website as it, part of the agenda. It is. Yeah. Okay, great. But I can put it up on a separate. Um, my suggestion at this point, I, there's some other trail that's going on currently that I think's got the uh, people's attention right now. So my suggestion will will digest this for a bit and then um, reconvene later in the year and start working on um, you know the plans going forward. Great, that would be my. Um, from a just kind of a grant perspective, uh, the deadline it was two years from I believe maybe last July. So we do want to. Um, you know, kind of right away submit the paperwork so that the town gets paid back. So as long as that's okay with you, that you acknowledge the receipt of it so that we can um, submit that, you know, work with you to submit the paperwork. Jason, anything? No, actually, and I think we do have a draft letter from the town acknowledging receipt of the feasibility study that, that so we So that have. closes the loop. That closes the loop. Good. Yep. And then we, you know, we have a website as well. We can post, um, if it's not already, we'll post mm -hmm. The, the feasibility study and you know we've been building out a, a network of interested residents we can share it with them so we can also share it out well thank you so much yeah. for all your work I know it's been a lot <laughs> to undertake and we appreciate it greatly thank you. thank you. Uh, phillipstowntrails.org right? phillipstowntrails.org yeah. thank you can I just make a quick comment sure of course um, e e so e even though uh, Supervisor Van Tassel um, offered a thanks I just because you know, I, I've been sitting in on the trails committee meeting for a number of years. I just want to acknowledge like what a massive and monumental effort the feasibility has been over the 19 months, um, and the amount of public engagement that the trails committee has done. Uh, letter writing campaigns, multiple meetings, meetings with dozens of stakeholders, a survey for 300 people, and mostly I want to thank you know the co-chairs Rebecca Ramirez and and Laura Bozzi who have put hundreds of hours into this project. Um, and if it's okay, I wanted to, because uh, it, it, you know, volunteers have been out on roads, they've been walking trails, they've been taking pictures, so just take a moment to read, if that's okay, the members Absolutely. of the Trails Committee, um, because everybody, this would not have happened without a volunteer effort by community members. Um, so those, those members are Emily May Chidel, Lauren De La Vega, Trace Danisich, Howard Kaplowitz, Jenny Kempson, MJ Martin, Jeff Michelson, John Pavlik, Chris Sandland, Pete Samuelson, Marianne Sullivan, uh, Paul Thompson, Shamala Candia Thompson, James Turpin, and Jennifer Wagner. And uh, I know um, that one of those key recommendations is to, to begin with uh, the portion of the alignment from the village of Cold Spring to Boscobel. So 
uh, following John, John's lead, I, th I think uh, you all have done so much um, and it's going to be now very interesting to kind of get down into the nitty gritty and find some fundraising to do the next stage of work. But, but thank you all for the work you've done. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next is a resolution approving the Putnam County Mutual Aid Plan, and this is, again, a roll call vote. Okay, so this is something that's adopted yearly through um, Putnam County Bureau of Emergency Services. We need to do it for the Continental Village Fire Department because they fall under our um, umbrella. So this was brought to our attention by the Continental Village Fire Department. So can I get a motion to adopt, approve the Putnam County Mutual Aid Plan as written? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, Councilwoman Cotter. Aye. Councilman Flaherty. Aye. Councilman Angel. Aye. Councilwoman Farrell. Aye. And I vote aye. Thank you. <clears throat> Next is a resolution adopting the updated sexual harassment, sexual harassment prevention policy, and this is another roll call vote. So um, this is something that's provided to us by Maureen, who is our safety coordinator for the town of Phillipstown, keeps us up to date. So this was a required um, for the town to adopt. We take it very seriously, um, and there is no uh, exchange, no reason for anybody to feel harassed in the workplace. Steve, would you like to add anything? No, except uh, Jason has, uh, with a uh, good proofreading eye, caught one minor correction that should be made to it. Okay. Um, turn it over to Jason for that. No, no, it was just a question. I just noticed on the second page, it's just the first paragraph under policy, just changing city to town in that first paragraph. paragraph I think it's a, just a simple amendment. Okay. All right, so can, uh, can I get a motion to adopt the sexual harassment prevention policy as amended? Thank you, Jason. Anybody else want to comment? I think it's a good policy that will provide, you know, protection to all of the town employees um, and volunteers and yes. much need. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just very important. I mean, being a member of the firehouse, we have to do education on this every year and in, in where I work you have to do it he got to go through a program every single year so it's uh, this is very very important and it's you know if people people take it seriously yes so yeah. and I think it's good that we yeah. include contractors <laughs> sexual harassment policies are very important yes. so I'm incomplete okay can I get a motion to approve so moved second second councilwoman Cotter Aye. Councilman Flaherty. Aye. Councilman Angel. Aye. Councilwoman Farrell. Aye. And I vote aye. Thank you. <coughs> Next is a resolution approving the shared services agreement with New York State DOT, and this is another roll call vote. We have a lot of roll call votes tonight. Yeah. So um, this is just something that allows New York State DOT to work with Phillipstown Department of Transportation or Phillipstown Highway Department in the event of a natural disaster or any other uh, type of emergency where equipment needs to be transferred and or manpower. Uh, this enables them to do that um, at a minute's notice. So uh, could I get a motion to support the resolution approving shared services agreement with New York State Department of Transportation? So moved. Second. Second. Councilwoman Farrell. Aye. Councilman Angel. Aye. Councilman Flaherty. Aye. Councilwoman Cotter. Aye. And I vote aye. Thank you. Next is to schedule any workshops or meetings. Um, right now we have the joint info session on the Fjord Trail um, Monday, May 8th mm -hmm. at 7 p.m. at the Haldane Auditorium. Um, we have the public hearing scheduled for May 17th at 7.30 on the stormwater report. And there is a CCA Q&A session scheduled for May 24th at 7.30. And then we have our regular meeting on June 1st next month. Okay. I have no other requests, so that's all. I, anybody have any other requests for um, workshops? Um, just to briefly touch on Monday's event, um, it's it's becoming a very contentious <laughs> discussion, right? Uh, a contentious discussion. So I would um, suggest that everybody come with open ears. 
um, and we're going to be polite. Uh, the I expect the general public of the town of Phillipstown, as always, to be be polite and um, keep it under control. Keep your emotions in control. If you've lost control of your emotions, I'm suggesting you leave the room, because um, there will be no outbursts tolerated. There will be no um, disrespect tolerated. It will be controlled quickly. Um, we're still in the process of fine-tuning some of the um, scheduling. I'm meeting with uh, both mayors again tomorrow evening. Um, as it looks now, there will be representation from New York State Parks as well as uh, the Fjord Trail itself. So uh, I'm encouraged that the questions that have been presented will be answered and hopefully clearly, and then we'll have a short open period of, um, of discussion as well. So. Um, my thanks to uh, Councilman Angel for all the work that he's done on this. Um, he formulated, along with his wife, the uh, <laughs> the brains of the operation. <laughs> the process of gathering the questions, um, rating the questions, and um, it was a lot of work, and I really appreciate it. I don't know where we would be with without your work on this. So. Um, the doors open at 6.30. If any of the board members have questions, we have the ability to ask questions as well. So um, I, I know I have one regarding the budget, which I presented the other day. So I'm sure there will be um, a, a good crowd, without a doubt. So I'm just encouraging everybody to stay calm and um, pleasant and polite. That's exactly. mine. The doors open at 6.30 and the meeting starts at 7. Yes, the okay. doors open at 6.30. If you want to speak, if you're part of the public and you'd like to speak, you need to sign up um, between 6.30 and 7. If you're not on the list, you will not speak. Um, this is the fourth one of these that I've, I've been part of, um, and I was taught by Richard how they run under control. And majority of the time it stayed under control with the other um, three hot items that the town had um, going through. So the model is set. Um, we have a, this is a joint information session between the town of Phillipstown and the two villages. We've worked very well together with both villages, both mayors. Um, my hat goes off to both of them. They have put a lot of effort into this, as well as Eliza Starbuck has done a tremendous amount of work with the advertising. So. Um, it's a lot of work that was placed on the town and the two villages, and it's not a project that the town or the two villages has presented. Uh, in the other two large public meetings that I was on, it was town items. This is not. This is something outside. So, And just to be clear, this is not a public hearing. We will not be voting on anything. We have no decision-making ability that night. This is strictly uh, an informational session for the three uh, municipalities. Steve, did I miss anything on that? I think no, I, I wasn't aware you were taking public comments. I thought it was more of a listening session, but um, if you are, that's that's fine. Yeah. Anybody? Okay. Yeah. Guys, so we'll uh, we'll see everybody Monday night. That's yes. it. So there's no other workshops. I don't think we have anything else. No. Nope. We already have four. Well, there's I mean there's just the public hearing on the 17th and then the CCA thing on the 24th. But that's it. Um, I have two items that I one one is the um, I discussed this at a workshop the other night. The proposed addition for the Continental Village Firehouse. Um, I have the paperwork here in front of us. Um, we we um, discussed it uh, informally the other night. I just wanted it in the record that um, Continental Village is proposing a small foyer addition outside their doors currently, which will give them. A weather seal and a weather break. Um, it also works better for their entry as far as packages being delivered. They can lock the outside, lock the inside doors, leave the outside doors open so stuff can be placed in the foyer. The problem is it's actually the front of the firehouse is on Town of Phillipstown property, which is the road. So there will be a process that we have to start to give that property to the Continental Village Fire Department. It really makes no sense for the town to be holding the property is basically their parking lot um, that's part of the town. Every piece around that is owned by the Continental Village Fire Department, excluding one as you come in on the right-hand side. So that will that section of Spy Pond Road will remain part of the town's property, and then it goes to the town of Cortland before you get out to the, uh, the other road. I can never remember the name of the other one. but um, So we, as a town board, will draft a letter um, requesting that the building department issue a building permit um, binding that the town 
gives this property over. They're looking to build this addition over the summer during the construction month. So, I mean, I have no problem with the property being given. If it's not the entire piece, if anybody has a problem with the entire piece going, then we'll just give them what they need to adopt uh, to get a, a building permit. So I'm fully supportive of the Continental Village Fire Department. They're always wonderful to work with, and they provide a great service to the Continental Village community. So does anybody have any opposition or discussion on the matter? I have the site plan here, uh, as well as the proposed um, building, you know, building plans. If anybody wants to look at them, they're here. Uh, there's a copy with, with Greg as well. So, Steve, anything? Well, I don't want to get into it too much, but what will need to happen in regard to giving them the property is the town board will need to have some sort of description of what it is you're declaring surplus. I don't know if you can do it from what you have or if we're going to need another survey or, or what. The board will adopt a resolution declaring the property surplus. You will then enter into an agreement to deed it over to the Continental Village Fire, I guess it's a department? Fire department. Yes. Fire department, okay. And um, you'll adopt a resolution approving the agreement. That resolution will be subject to permissive referendum. Once the referendum period passes, a deed will be executed and they'll take over whatever it is they need to, whether it's the whole bit or just a piece of it or, or whatnot. We'll have to work that out as we go along. But there is a way that we can issue them a building permit prior to that whole process happening so they can build As, as long as you've expressed that you're willing to do that, absolutely. Okay. And you just Which get. I think we are in agreement that we're willing to do that. Yes? Okay. So we can start that process. Yeah, they, they, you can get a building permit. If you change your mind, they're going to have a problem. Right. They yeah. proceed at their own risk, but <laughs> right. the building permit can issue, yes. Okay, great. Thank you. So we'll go ahead with that. Um, and that was it, I think, for me. That was the only other thing I had. So the pump update we discussed, so that's it. All right. So uh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Next on the agenda is the Code Enforcement Monthly Report. Um, this is for April 2023. Total fees collected, $109,404. That's got to be a record. Um, 25 total permits issued, six additions, alterations, or repairs to residential buildings, two additions, alterations, or repairs to commercial buildings, and 17 all other permits. Um, and the code enforcement officer would just like to remind everyone to please take time to service the safety features of your swimming pool prior to use. Absolutely. So important. Thank you, Greg. What a month. That's amazing. Okay, uh, any other business that may become before the town board? Lady? Miss Gilman. Would you like to step up to the mic? Otherwise, they're never going to hear what you're what you're asking. I can't hear you on a good day. God bless. There is a Cold Spring Cemetery in the North Highlands on Horton Road. We used to put flags there. I don't know that you want to trip through that and put a lot of flags for Memorial Day, but one in some prominent place. Hmm? Do you want flags? That we can put flags. We had always put we had put flags in the past yeah. in the Biddy Budney. Well, the VFW does the big cemetery because right. we've all. So you're, they don't do Cedar Street, and they don't do. No. Right. Uh, okay, I, I didn't understand you. that. My, my mistake. That's no, no, okay. it's all right. I don't know. Well, I don't know with Joe Edigon and Terry I'm Lakey sure not we being could, uh, facilitate at least some flags at that. Yeah. You just could pick one of the get larger my Girl Scouts to do it again. One, yeah. Just yeah. keep them out of the poison ivy up there. Just wear long pants. Yeah. Do your Girl Scouts. I didn't it. understand it. Yeah. No. Yeah. We. Yeah, um, if you want to put some flags up, we can get them to go up there as well, and we can put some. Yeah. Who's From that. Who's up there? Okay. That's, no old, that's an older cemetery. Yes, ma'am. This is about the trail, Fjord Trail. I will come to the meeting on Monday, of course. Where can I get information? I know that there's been talk for years of solving these problems along Route 90. Where can I get information about previous plans that were submitted, that were discussed by this body or other bodies, and what decisions were made about the previous plans? Well, again, we, we will, these, these questions will come up Monday night, um, and I would prefer to wait till that, but 
If you go on the Fjord Trail website, I'm sure you can see the development of the plans from the beginning. Um, I, I no, no, I, I understand I can find the development of these plans, uh -huh. but I know that previous to this, there have been other proposals made about the situation I on 9D. But I don't know where to find that information. And where they are today. Is that yeah. kind of what you're looking for? Is what the original plan was and how it progressed to where it is today? Is that what you're looking for? Well, again, well I, yeah, I mean, that's about what, what, how this particular plan progressed, but I know there have been I think there have been previous plans or previous discussions about that part of the road. Um, there, there's always been talk of different plans, whether there's formal records that are on file anywhere, okay. that I really can't tell you. But I, I can tell you that the plan to address this is at least 20 years old. Okay. And my predecessor, Richard Shea, was a part of that plan, planning process, basically from day one. Okay, so, I'll go on the website. Well, Thank you. you. Know, they have the office at the old Dutchess Manor, isn't that their headquarters? Yeah, but it's not facilitated. Oh, yet. no. Okay. You can check their website. Yeah. Hugh Moss's wife's the director of communications. She be able to there are currently no vacancies. No vacancies. <laughs> and she is one. Oh, oh, sorry. The oh. Recreation Commission, we had a resignation. Oh, oh. So, Lydia? Oh, Lydia was oh. Yeah. Her kids so are going to a school out of district, and she's going to, you know, have to shift her focus. Right. So it's, uh, well, she's not going to have. It's great people. Yes. So we have an opening. So is that something we advertise for, or does the recreation, because I know. Um, yeah, usually handles that. Well, we would I'll advertise ask. it, but they would interview with them. Yeah, they would do the interview. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then they make a recommendation to the town board, is my understanding. Okay. It's been a while since we appointed anybody to the, I'll look back. trying to think see. of who I'll look ben back. I think Ben and yeah. Eric were the latest okay. yeah. yes. All right. That's it. Anybody? Oh, I yeah. just have a comment. Um, I spoke to Dr. Marianne Sutton, who founded the Keeping Phillipstown Healthy Coalition. Yeah. And she has information to get out. And many of us receive postcards that they sent out about the vaccination rate because right. we have a low rate in Phillipstown. Um, but they're concerned with other health issues, and if they have announcements, they wanted to know if they could put them on the town website, if we could share that with Tara. The well, um, website's going to be cranking. Yeah, but it's, it's, I mean, it's going to be probably three months before our before new website running. is up. Up Three months at the least until it's up and will, running. The current still... one, I can only do gotta, so much with like um, but it. yeah any information as long as it's just text information i have trouble posting flyers and stuff images oh, yeah, don't always work yeah then that's fine we can get that up Great. Absolutely. easily and thank you marianne thank you sir no. anybody good well may approval of vouchers are we up to date on the vouchers i don't have to listen to sue yell at me we're all good with vouchers being yeah, signed okay uh general so moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Highway. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Continental Village Park District. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Continental Village Water District. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you so much.